Well, good morning, everyone. Thomas Montgomery here. It's a beautiful Monday morning, December 20th, 2021. We are uh, winding down the, the year and uh, preparing for the year ahead. So we have some short-term topics and then uh, a little bit of a, a, a year in review secondary topic we'll get to in just a, a moment. But specifically, as I'm sharing the screen with you here, I think there's some confusion. And so I just wanted to clarify that. So let's, let's go through the process briefly. So you, especially if you're new, so you understand the context. So as a white label partner, you're going out identifying small businesses or entrepreneurs that are looking for capital to start or grow a business. You put them under agreement with you. We've provided you a template that you can use. And then you submitted them into the white label client submission form on the white label page. That's the only place in the world to submit clients is through the form, the white label client submission form on the white label page of IIMFL. Once you've done that, then within 24 hours, our intention is to send them a white label Adobe funding proposal app sent to them, you're copied. And also we send you a direct email to let you know that the client has been received and is in process. So you're really getting two points of confirmation that the client is now being processed. Again, typically within 24 hours from the time that you submit them. Almost always within 48 hours, but our goals within 24 hours. So then that Adobe goes to them, you're copied, you and they get daily reminders. And what you really want to be doing is, is encouraging them to complete that funding app. It doesn't commit them to anything, but if we don't have a completed funding app application, then we're not able to help them secure their first tranche of financing, which of course is their first round of capital. And that is also designed to cover the loan package so we can go build the loan package out for the larger capital raise. Because again, the concept is we want it to be no out-of-pocket cost for the client. So the refundable deposit, and again, you can make it refundable or non-refundable, but the deposit uh, will be paid out of the first tranche of capital. So once they complete that one page funding proposal via Adobe, comes back to us. And again, our goal is within 24 hours to get them some funding offers. And so we'll run that through our, our algorithms, see what they qualify for, and we notify you. So we will let you know, did they get approved for cash funding? If so, you should be reaching out to them, encouraging them to accept all of the cash funding offers that they've received, which could be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, $60,000. Or if they didn't receive any cash funding offers, which gets more relevant to the point we're on on the agenda here, if they should get no cash funding offers, which is unlikely, but, but does occur, then we will send them the 0% financing. So it's great for them. Can't beat 0%, low $100 payments, and then that keeps them in compliance. So now we can move forward and build out their, their loan package. And again, we revenue share that with you 50-50. So the agenda item number one, all that was just background, by the way. So agenda item number one is, well, what happens when a client signs up for that 0% financing with a low $100 payments? but they breach the agreement. Maybe they breach it because they don't even have $100 in their bank account, so it comes back NSF. Maybe they contest the charge or what have you. What happens then? That's our first agenda item. Well, we're gonna notify you that that has happened. And we did that over the weekend. So some of you received an invoice and I think it was misinterpreted. Some of you kind of got upset or irate or concerned saying, well, What's this mean? Why, why am I as a white label partner getting an invoice when it's the client that defaulted? Well, understand the chain of events. The client is contracted with you and we're kind of your vendor. And if they can't get any cash funding, then we offer this the second chance round of funding. And if they then default on it, we notify you by sending you an invoice. 
But again, if you look at it just as that, it seems unjust. But if you hear the rest of the sequence, you're like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. So we send you an invoice because at that point, the client owes the $2,500 deposit. They didn't get any cash funding. We set up 0% financing. And sure enough, they breached that already. So are we wanting you to come up with $1,250 out of your pocket? Of course not. And so that's, that's why we're explaining. What you'll do then is say, uh-oh, this client signed up for the 0%, which you all have already known, and they didn't do what they said that they would do. They're not paying as agreed. So then what I would think that you would want to do is you'll want to turn around and invoice them. You might say, well, why, why am I as the white label partner invoicing them? Because they have the agreement with you. They promise to pay that deposit, whether it's refundable or not. And almost always it's 2,500. I know some of you make it larger. Well, together we've offered them financing to cover that. So they don't have that out of pocket, but they've breached that. They failed to, to comply with that. So now they owe you that 2,500 in full. And so what I would do if I were you, I'd immediately invoice them because now you know that they've defaulted. Because if they don't default, what happens? If, if they keep going on 0%, then they pay as agreed and we split that 50-50. You still get your 1250. It's just paid out over time because we're getting it over time. But in this case, if they breached it, then go ahead and you would want to invoice them and then give them a call and say, hey, hey buddy, we got to work this out, right? We did what we promised to do. You signed up and you're failing to do what you agreed to do. Maybe there's a misunderstanding. I don't know. You need to resolve. It. It's technically your client. White label partners have direct agreements with their clients you'll need to, to figure it out. Now, if you talk to them and they say, oh, you know what, I'll, I'll just pay the invoice. I don't want to do the $100 payments. Then great. Let them pay you and then pay us our invoice. And it's a 50-50 split, right? Fair deal. That's what we agreed to do in the beginning. Now, I think what many of you are concerned about is, uh-oh, what if they don't pay it? Well, that's okay. You're not going to be caught upside down. So if they don't pay your invoice, which we recommended that you sent after we've invoiced you, then all you need to do is let us know and we'll figure out what are we going to do with that client? Because this is not about putting you in an upside down position. That's not the, the model that we have as a 50-50 white label partner. So you'll need to decide what you're going to do with them. Right. So they, they've enrolled, they made a commitment, they breached their agreement, you've invoiced them and they're not paying the invoice. What are we going to do? Well, there are several different options. You could write it off and I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. Uh, you could proceed and litigate them because they, they breached their contract with you. And if you choose to litigate with them, then of course, we're going to put our invoice on hold. Because so, again, I think there were some misperceptions, like we're trying to come after you for your client's default. Well, the, the invoice is relevant because you do owe us $1,250 of the $2,500, but you would pay it after the client pays you. So if the client turns around and pays you right away, great. You pay us and then we've got our 50-50. If the client doesn't pay, then we need to figure out what we're going to do to resolve it. And you could write it off, wouldn't recommend that. You could litigate them. You could sell the, the debt to a debt buyer. And we'll talk more about some options of what to do with non-performing debt in the, the bottom half of this agenda. So let me pause there. So again, I apologize for any concern that any of you had by getting invoices over the weekend for your clients that have breached but I think now you understand the sequence. Does anyone have questions regarding this process? Does this seem okay? Do you have concerns with it? Do you have issue with it? Let me know before we move on to our main topic for today. And again, we'll submit our questions, comments, concerns in the question and answer section of Zoom. It's kind of like a chat. Okay, does that make sense to everyone? So it's not hanging you out to dry. It's not putting you in a bad situation. It's just, this is the process if they breach their agreement. 
We will invoice you, which notifies you that they have failed to perform. And then what I would recommend you do is invoice them because that's what they promised to pay. We've tried to help set up financing. They haven't complied with that. If they pay you, then pay us. We split it 50-50. If they don't pay you, we're not asking you to pay the 1250 and be upside down on that client. Instead, we'll need to get together and figure out, okay, what are we going to do with, with the client? All right, David's got a question. It's a little, a little bit different. So I'm going to hold David's question. David, I'll, I'll come back to it. Okay, so we're good with agenda item number one. I think we can all say, ah, this, this is okay. This seems equitable. This seems just. I think when you received the invoice, and, and we wanted you to have the invoices so you knew what was out there as we prepared for today's call, but it wasn't meant to uh, cause you frustration, concern, or, or stress. Okay, so let's move on to the bottom half of the agenda and I'll hit some of these other questions that may not be entirely direct to what we're talking about. Okay, so second agenda topic. I'll make it a little bit smaller so we can see it all at one time. So we need to close out the year 2021, obviously. And the way that we do that is we have a reconciliation with each of our white label partners to review every white label client. So some of you like Mark, I forget the number, you're at around 150 clients enrolled this year. Well, that call is going to take a little while, but we need to do that. We need to reconcile and close out the year, both for your records and our records. So what will happen is we're going to have one of our staff, it won't be me, one of our staff is going to visit with you. And, and we have a, a link here, a Calendly link to use. And I also included in the email reminder. And so what's going to happen is literally every white label client that you submitted is going to be discussed, going to be reviewed, looking at three primary metrics. Did that client pay their deposit or are they on some sort of payment arrangement in good standing? So that's the first thing, because if that's met, then we move on. If they've not done that, then, then the next step isn't applicable to that given client. If they have paid their deposit and or are on a payment plan, then we need to look at their loan package. Is that loan package complete? If it's not, if it's incomplete, then frankly, you as a white label partner need to get with them and get it complete so we can move forward. And then ultimately, have we met their $100,000 funding status? That's the ultimate goal is to help each client raise $100,000 or more. And so these are the three key triggers that will be discussed. So if you submitted a lot of clients, it's gonna take a little while to go through, but, but we owe that to the clients. We need to know where they're at and if they're off track, what are we going to do to get them on track? I will tell you because of our growth, I think we'll probably start doing monthly reconciliations starting uh, next year, but this is our year-end reconciliation for 2021. So each, each client, at, at the end of that call, there needs to be a clear action plan. What are we doing with that client? Well, the action plan would be if their deposit isn't paid, what are we going to do to get their deposit in? Because they promised to do it. Have, where's the breakdown? Was there funding offered to them they didn't accept or figure out where it's at. If they have paid their deposit, then what's the status of their loan package that needs to be completed? If it's not complete, we need a plan to, to resolve that and get it completed. And if the loan package is complete, then have we completed at least a $100,000 capital raise? Because that's the deal that we're promising to work with them on. But again, the $100,000 funding status is irrelevant if they've not completed their loan package and the loan package is irrelevant if they've not completed their deposit or at least set up a payment plan and they're in good standing with that. Okay, so what we'll, we may find as we're going through this is you might have some clients that contracted with you and then you submitted them in on the white label client submission form and they're not engaged, they're not participating. Well, 
obviously we want clients to be successful. We want them to be engaged. We want them to be participating because if they're not, then we'll, we will not get to this end goal. Well, it requires the client, if I can highlight that correctly, we need, we need the client to be engaged to get to the end goal. So if, if you find, as, as we're going through this reconciliation, that you have one or more clients that are not engaged, what you may want to do is invoice them. And, and this is consistent with the agreement that I assume you have with them, is that they have to be active. They have to participate. Are you trying to invoice them just to take their money or be mean to them? No, no, not at all. You're just giving them a gentle reminder, hey, you enrolled in the Access to Capital program, you're not actively participating. We cannot be successful if you don't actively participate. So you give them an option to either get compliant and continue. So then you void the invoice because the goal isn't to get money from client defaults. The goal is to keep clients engaged so we can go through, collect the deposit, build their loan package and get them at least $100,000 of funding. So. Option one is they get engaged, you void the invoice and we just keep on going, kind of hit the reset button with them. Or if not, then, then they're breaching their agreement, right? Because if they've enrolled with you, they've made promises and commitments to, to be active and participate. And if they don't do that, then we, we need to figure out what are we going to do with each of those clients? Not a general policy necessarily, but what do you want to do with each of the clients that you've enrolled? I think there's typically three outcomes. You might think of some others. Again, the goal is to get them compliant and continue as intended, but if, if they won't do that, you could write their balance off. I wouldn't recommend that because you're still going to have the obligations under our agreement. So if you void their agreement, that doesn't void the fact that you submitted them through us. So that could put you in an upside down position. That wouldn't, that wouldn't be equitable to you. So it's, it's an option, but I wouldn't recommend it. You could litigate and you can just go to small claims courts and pretty easily uh, file it. It's, it's not, you don't need an attorney. It's fairly easy. You're gonna win 99.999% of the time, I would think because they've breached their agreement, you're going to receive the amount that they owe you plus court costs, plus collection costs, those daily late fees. And so frankly, you might find that your most profitable clients are those that you have to litigate because of their failure to perform. That's not the design of, of what we do. But I think if you look at others that work in the subprime space, and we're not exclusively subprime, of course, but if you look at those like Capital One and others that operate with, with many subprime clients, the most profitable clients are all often those that default and you litigate against. And then the other option would be sell the note to a debt buyer. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. We have an asterisk down here. So it's very important that we get you to schedule a call to reconcile your 2021 clients. If you don't do that, then we can't reconcile. So then the compliance department is going to invoice you for whatever is owed from those clients. Obviously, that's not what we want. We want you to use the link, schedule a call. Our staff will go, with, go through with you with every white label client, review where the client is. Have they paid their deposit or not? or are they on a payment plan in good standing? Is their loan package complete or not? And then have we completed at least $100,000 capital raise? It's unlikely that this has occurred without you knowing it, but uh, the primary issues typically arise from the first two bullets. All right, so wrapping up the agenda and then we'll get into your very good questions. So if you don't want to hold them accountable, just let us know and, and we invoice you for the balance and you can write off what's owed to you. Again, I, I wouldn't recommend that because that puts you in a negative position. That's not the design of the program. But the point is, if you don't want to collect from them, you don't have to. Most often, I think what you'll probably do is uh, one of these two options. 
And then I did mention, you know, there's debt buyers out there. Some of you are, are debt buyers. And so if you don't want to deal with a non-performing agreement, then you could sell it. All right, so let me shrink this down small enough so we can see it. And then one other agenda item is some of you, I think, have tried being a white label partner and maybe you've come to the conclusion, mm, this isn't right for me. I, I don't really want to move forward and be a white label partner next year in 2022. So again, with that, you're still going to schedule your reconciliation call. If I can highlight it properly. The, the discussion like we've talked about still needs to happen. So we look at every client submitted or even if you didn't submit any clients in that, that discussion still needs to happen. And then we can look at options. So you don't have that role, that title, those responsibilities going forward. But it's, it's a little more complicated because we need to figure out, well, how many clients have you enrolled? Who's going to mentor them if you're going to quit and so forth, but, but it's okay. I don't want you to think that if, if you tried being a white label partner, it's it's not a good fit, then we can look at options to terminate that at the end of 2021, December 31st. And so that way we might have a smaller group of white label partners come 2022, starting in January, but we have those that are, are the most well-suited. Some of you are knocking it out of the park. You know, the last thing that you'd consider is discontinuing, but others have not found their groove for one reason or the other. Okay, so with that, what we're going to do is dig into your questions, comments, concerns placed in, in Zoom here. But with that, without a doubt, what you need to do, please, 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 is schedule your reconciliation call. So don't schedule with my Calendly because I'm not doing those reconciliation calls. Uh, I'm here to support you and train and do all that in general, but I'm not doing the reconciliations. That's done exclusively through that link, just to clarify. All right, so David has a question. David asks, if a client does not receive capital on the first round and pause there. So David, what we know is not all clients will receive cash funding. Most should, of course, but uh, er everyone will get a funding offer. It, it may be some sort of alternative financing, David, but everyone will get a financing offer. But David is, is really asking, regardless of those details, can he release a, con a client? And uh, we've told you several times that you can. You know, we told you here, you can write the, the client off. And if you don't wanna hold them accountable, we talked about it here. So that doesn't change our agreement between you as a white label partner and us as, as the other, I guess, side of the white label partnership. But if you just wanna release clients at, at any time, you can, David, they're, they're your client, it's up to you. All right, so Warren asks, so this is after they've received funding, regardless if it was under capital ready or access to capital. Well, and, and so forgive me, Warren, you asked the question earlier in the process. So just to clarify for everyone, we have two parallel programs, access to capital and capital ready. They do the same thing in the same way. They're identical with only one exception. Capital ready clients pay their $2,500 deposit upfront. We're not trying to finance that. They're just paying that upfront where access to capital, we wait to invoice them until after their first tranche of financing. So that's the only difference between the two. So I guess, Warren, with that explanation, though, this would probably be irrelevant for clients that are in capital ready because they've already paid their deposit to you up front. So none of this would be going on. So uh, I apologize if there's a misunderstanding that you have or I have in relation to your question, but I, I would say, no, this is irrelevant if they've just paid you out of pocket. Okay. Winston says he financed clients now for his company. When they do that, the money comes to him. 
Yeah, and and that that's fine if if you want to um, to take care of that front end, Winston. That's perfect. So I, I think just to translate, I think Winston's saying that he's not going to use our zero percent financing. He's going to take care of it himself. That's fine. I just Winston, you're probably a little bit more sophisticated a little you have more infrastructure to do that than some of our other partners that'd be our preference quite frankly but some of our partners don't want to be responsible for uh, setting up billing and so forth all right all right Peggy says she's clear on it our clients would take financing okay Yep, and I'm sure that 2022 is going to be awesome for you, Peggy. Okay. So, uh, Sarita's asking about uh, writing policies. And so, when we build a loan package, there's a number of things that go into a loan package. And you'll see that on the white label page. There's training about it, and it's broken out. We look at, at putting together a business plan and and financial projections, the, the key person policy that Sarita is asking about and, and other elements. And so uh, if you are a white label partner, then you're responsible for helping the client through the process. But Sarita, if, if you find that you're not really good at it, not really comfortable mentoring clients through the modules and, and doing these things, then what you can certainly do is delegate that. And so you could still write the policies, but you could delegate the mentoring out if you want. But uh, I think the answer to your question, Sarita, just like for everyone else is we need to get you scheduled. And this is again, not a schedule with me. You're gonna be scheduled with one of our staff to schedule your 2021 reconciliation. And again, that's the time if, if you're not wanting to continue as a white label partner into 2022, that's an opportunity to, to set up an exit strategy. But we, we have to take into consideration your book of business, right? So Sarita, I think you've driven in, I forget how many, 20, 30 clients. And so let's say that you don't want to continue in 2022. Well, we still have to figure out who's going to mentor the clients through this process that you've already submitted. So that's why the reconciliation has to occur. Okay, thank you, Sarita. All right, Augustus asked, for a new business, how do they pay? Hmm. Okay, so Augustus is asking a, a, a very strategic question. So if you have a client that is does not get approved for cash funding, then, well, first of all, I, I think that the issue is deeper. There's going to, each of you will probably have clients that come to you that have cash flow problems. And so they want to come borrow money. Well, that's a bit of a dangerous game, isn't it? Because if we're going to go borrow money and we don't have any cash to pay back the debt, that, that's leverage to the nth degree. But regardless of that, if you have a client, Augustus, or any of us that have cash flow issues, what we can do is help them improve their cash flow situation. And, and many of you, what have you done? I think Jasper's done this and others have done this, is you just make them a referral partner, right? And so then they can go out, spread the word, they don't have to sell anything to anyone, they don't have any costs, they become a referral partner to you and you pay them for each conversion so they can get some cash flow going because it's, it's very difficult to just borrow your way out of a position where you have no cash flow. And so with that being said, you know, they're coming to you, Augustus, wanting to borrow $100,000, right? And so that's gonna be a lot more than $100 payments. But I think the short answer to your very good question is, if you run into a client that's got cash flow issues, be the solution to that have them become a referral partner. They drive clients into you and then you pay them for that work. You can pay them hourly or per conversion. And so everybody wins. Thank you, Augustus. 
Jeremy asked about the scheduling link. Well, the scheduling link is here. And I also sent it out on an email this morning. So you all should have the scheduling link twice so far. All right, so Jasper asked. So Jasper, it's interesting. So you'll, you'll have this, you'll have clients that wanna name their own terms. It's like, okay, I wanna borrow a lot of money I want 0% interest and I want to pay $13 a month for the next 150 years. It's like, well, I mean, you and I don't get to, Jasper, you and I don't get to choose the, the repayment terms the lenders do. So we can work with clients the best of our ability, but ultimately they're going to get approved for what they qualify for. Of course, as technical advisors, what we're doing is helping them improve their qualifications, but at the end of the day, the terms are decided by the lender and or the extender of credit, not you or I, unless you're going to become the financer, I guess, Jasper. So uh, I don't have any way to negotiate the interest rate on an SBA loan or to make the repayment term 40 years instead of 20 years. Uh, I can't change that. I'm assuming you can't either. All right, moving on down the list here. So uh, let's, let's kind of wrap it up because I think the rest of the questions are, are largely redundant of, of what we covered. So the first thing that we covered this morning is that if you have a client that sets up for 0% financing, but they breach it, you will get an invoice from us. Don't be alarmed by that. That is notification that your client isn't complying with the repayment terms. So then at that point, I would recommend that you invoice them for the full $2,500 deposit because our collective efforts of helping them get that finance has failed because they're not complying. You want to encourage them to make some sort of payment arrangements with you. Let us know what that is and, and we'll work around that. Obviously, if they pay your invoice, then you can pay our invoice. Uh, as I mentioned, if they don't pay your invoice in full, we'll figure it out. If they're going to flat out just quit, then, uh, of course, we need to decide what we're going to do with them, which is not any different than down here. We talked about breaching an agreement. Our main topic today was about doing the end of the year white label client reconciliation. We need you to use the link, schedule, and then our staff is going to go through literally every client with you to review. Okay, where are that with their deposit status? Because if that's not taken care of, that's number one priority. If their deposit is met or, or they've set up financing, then what's their loan package status? Is it complete? If not, that's got to be the focus. If that's complete, then where are we on their, their capital raise? Every client will have an action plan coming out of your call. If you have clients that are not engaged, we don't just write them off and say, oh, never mind. Uh, most likely what you'll want to do is invoice them for what's called a global default. A global default is where you're going to invoice them for whatever your deposit amount is, typically $2,500, and whatever your performance fee is, typically 10% or $10,000. So a, a typical global default invoice that you would send them would be for $12,500. The goal isn't get, to get them to have some financial hardship to pay you $12,500, although they technically do owe it under the agreement. It's to prompt them to get engaged, to participate, to continue as intended. But if they don't, you do have a 12,000, in that example, $12,500 balance owed to you. So you could write off that $12,500, wouldn't recommend it, but you could. You could litigate for that $12,500 plus late fees, collection costs, court costs. It's going to cost the client a whole lot more. You're almost certainly going to win. Takes a little longer, but that could be your most profitable client. I tell. And then the other option would be just to sell that to a debt buyer. And if you're looking to sell any of yours to a debt buyer, uh, we can help facilitate that and that would come up during your reconciliation conversation. 
All right. And so that I think is, is where we're at. So if you don't think that you want to continue as a white label partner in 2022, I understand. You need to, to schedule the reconciliation call. We need to review everything and get it wrapped up. We'll come up with some options that I'm sure, sure will be mutually agreeable. Uh, if you want to continue as a white label partner next year, which we hope and, and, and pray that you will, uh, we, we need to make sure that everyone has our arms around the clients that are currently in the system. And you probably should anticipate we'll start doing this on a monthly basis rather than an annual basis because of our growth and volume next year. All right. Uh, so we got a question regarding collections. So let's go back to that and then we'll wrap up. So you're correct. If you sue them, just like we litigate when people owe us, and, and you'll probably want to consider litigating if people owe you, you almost always win. It's remarkably rare that you won't win the case because it's a breach of contract. And so the way the contracts are written, everything's it's called on the four corners of the page. Everything that's on the page is, is what's relevant. The client signed the agreement or accepted the terms and conditions. They're responsible for what they promised to do. Some people just by being sued will be motivated to pay because they know it's going to get a lot more expensive and you might even offer them some sort of discount to resolve it, to keep it from going to court. But if you do go to court, then uh, they'll have to go to court. If they don't go to court, it's a default judgment in your favor. You can even do some creative things like have them subpoenaed to come to court. And then if they don't, then they go to jail, which is aggressive, but that's an option. If you win and then they don't still want to pay you, then there's a process you go through to be able to collect it forcibly, kind of involuntarily. And so that's what the question was here. So yes, you can garnish their wages, you can uh, acquire their personal business assets. It'll vary by state that they live in, but uh, obviously the court system is going to be looking out for what we call creditor's rights. In this case, you're the creditor, you're not the, 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 the indebted. And so, uh, some some people will just do the right thing and, and, and pay as they promise to pay. Others you'll litigate and it might have to be more of an involuntary collection process, but uh, that the, the system works and will protect you if you go through it. But again, if you don't want to be bogged down with that, you can just sell the debt. Now you can rest assured that the debt buyer is going, well, debt buyers may just report them to collection agencies first but many of the debt buyers that we work with are law firms or law related firms, and they're going to litigate. And so what's really interesting, why debt buyers like it, for instance, we sold a bunch of, of accounts to a law firm out of Austin, Texas. So they're suing the clients for the amount owed plus 30% above that as the, as the collection cost. So the client that defaulted not only still owes what they owed to begin with, but the attorney's fees slash collection cost are on top of that. So on average, the, the defaulted client ends up paying about 140% of what the original balance was. So it, it's a terrible decision for someone to go through the legal process if, if you know you're going to lose, if, if you know you've breached an agreement, because the entire cost will be a lot more. All right. So with that being said, this was sent out to each of you this morning in advance of the call. You have the link there. I've gone through the link here uh, to get scheduled for the reconciliation. Uh, again, I won't be the one doing that. So uh, work with our staff. If there's any concerns, let me know. But otherwise, we need to get this reconciliation done, preferably this week, no later than next week, so we can close out 2021 on time. All right. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you back tomorrow morning. Have a good day. Bye-bye.